A friend of yours is lost in a sandstorm. He walks in an unknown direction to try and find help. You arrive at the starting point sometime later in a car. The visibility is horrible, and the only information you know is his walking speed and that he's walking in a straight line. What is the optimal path you should drive such that you meet up with your friend? Can you solve it? Even though you don't know which direction your friend is traveling in, there's a way to make sure you intersect all of his possible positions. First, consider the possibility he's walking to the right. In this case, drive after him for as long as it would take to intersect his position. In the likely case that you don't meet up with him, there's a possibility that he's on a path adjacent to yours. So, travel at an angle hoping to intersect with this position. If you don't meet up with him then, then maybe he was traveling on this path. Repeat this process over and over, and you're eventually going to end up driving around in a spiral shape like this. This means that the optimal path first involves traveling in a straight line, path 1, and then involves traveling in the spiral shape, path 2. But what is the length of path 1? Well, your friend has a speed x1 dot is equal to u, and you drive at a speed x2 dot is equal to v. Integrating reveals expressions for the positions. At time 0, your friend was at the starting position x1 is equal to 0. And at time capital T, you reach the starting position x2 is equal to 0. Use this to solve for the integrational constants and plug in. We're interested in the instant when your position is equal to your friend's position. So, equating these expressions, we discovered the time at which you expect to reach your friend. V capital T divided by V minus U. Plug this into any position equation to find the distance, capital D, at which you expect to reach your friend. So, so far we found the distance D that makes up path 1. What about path 2? Well, at any instant of driving, you can travel at a speed V. But your friend, traveling radially outwards, will always travel at a speed U. It's in your interest to match this component of speed so that you will always be at the same radius of your friend. Your remaining speed has to be used in a perpendicular direction, and from Pythagoras' theorem, that's the square root of v squared minus u squared. Now using cylindrical coordinates for your position r and theta, expressions can be derived for the radial component of your velocity, r dot, and the theta component of your velocity, r theta dot. So one of our two equations is r dot is equal to u. We can integrate with respect to time to get r is equal to ut plus c1. For simplicity, let's say we start our spiral at time t is equal to 0. And this is when we're at a radius of r is equal to d. So this means that r is equal to ut plus d. The other equation r theta dot is equal to the square root of v squared minus u squared is a bit harder. First, divide both sides by r and integrate. Since v, u, and d are all constants, this integral results in the natural logarithm given here. We know that theta is equal to 0 when we start our spiral, so that means that the integrational constant c2 is given by this. Substituting out the integrational constant yields the complete expression for theta as a function of time. But now we've got two parametric equations. We need to get rid of time to get an expression for our spiral. So let's substitute r in the theta equation. Now divide by the square root term and exponential both sides. The result, r is equal to d e to the theta divided by the square root of v on u squared minus 1, is the equation of our spiral. So there we go, let's plot the equation to get a better feel for things. Just as predicted, we have our spiral. Notice that as we increase our driving speed, the spiral contracts because we do the swoop out much quicker. That's it for this video, I hope you enjoyed it.